Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name is Louis Mendes, and we are coming to you live on a Friday night uh, due to the fact that the Addicts have announced a brand new head coach at the club, Michael Appleton, signing a two-year deal as the Charlton Athletic head coach coach uh, good evening uh, to everybody joining us live on your friday night joining us in the room is uh, mr joe puddyfoot head in joe all good thank you very much louis it's a hot one today so very sweaty really pleased to be on camera yeah 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 this is one of the downfalls of uh, of when we move to youtube is the fact you can see us in all sorts of uh, horrendous environments including where i am in what must be the hottest room on earth uh, also joining us is lewis cat how you doing luke yeah, a bit like Joe, mate. A bit sweaty, to be honest. It's quite hot, isn't it? Quite unpleasant. Yeah. I think that might just be the excitement of a, of a new Charlton Athletic manager. It should Must be head be. coach, actually. I'll need to Must change be. that ticket to head coach in a few seconds' time. <laughs> and, well, according to uh, All Hell Let Loose in the chat, uh, Sue Gallup in the bottom left uh, looks very worried. How are you doing, Sue? Are you worried? It depends what, what we talk with the context of what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm actually not hot and sweaty because I've just come back from Cape Verde this morning. So, um, this feels quite normal to me. So I'm well, all right. that's, uh... That's a humble brag if ever we needed one here on Charlton Live. So as I said on this evening's show, we are reacting to the fact that Michael Appleton uh, has joined the Addicts as head coach, uh, signed a two-year deal uh, earlier on uh, this morning. We will hear later on from the uh, new Addicts boss. Uh, we're also going to hear from the uh, technical director, uh, Andy Scott. Uh, we want to hear from you guys, of course. There's loads of you joining us live uh, on YouTube. Let us know what you make of the arrival of uh, Michael Appleton, the man to replace Dean Holden who was, of course, sacked nearly two uh, weeks ago. Um, get your messages in in the live chat. We've got tweets and emails to come to uh, as well. Have your say on this evening's chat on Live. Are you excited by the appointment of Michael Appleton? Are you underwhelmed? Let us know uh, which way you land on that. And the first person who's going to let us know is Joe Puddyfoot. Joe, um, the big Apple man, what are we saying? He's got massive arms, so, you know, I won't be asking any difficult questions now because he'll batter me. But, um, yeah, what, what, what are you making of his arrival? Well, we need someone that can pack a punch. So um, fingers crossed he can do that with, uh, considering the uh, work he's put into those guns. Um, I, I would describe myself as whelmed. Uh, it's, he's certainly better than some of the names that are out there. Um, and But then maybe not the uh, star signing, but, but we're in a difficult transition period. You know, let's be realistic. Who were we going to really get? Um, you know, Bose, as we found out, let's say he's got his cushy job in uh, Montserrat. Um, so he's obviously enjoying life. Uh, so we were we were down to, to who was out of work or in work that we could attract. And I think all of the in work people that we could attract, are, you know, on, on longer term contracts. So why would they take a, a punt on us when they've got a very stable club that they're they're potentially at? Um, I, I like the fact that he seems to play four, two, three, one. Um, I, I like the fact that he's got some experience at this level and that he is someone that has been described as a coach. So I think we need a lot of support on the, on the training pitch. But I, I would be lying if I said I feel that this is the answer and we're on the way up the leagues. So it's sort of a wait and see. I'm, I'm not against him, but I'm not 100% bought in at this point. Hmm. Uh, Lewis, Michael Apps. So he's, he's 47 years old. Obviously, he's had a, a bit of a managerial career. Started off... Um, 
in his coaching career with West Brom, he was uh, uh, assisting the likes of Roy the Boy Hodgson and, and uh, Di Matteo. There had had a had a game in temporary charge at uh, West Brom. I mean, more, more most notably in his career, he took Oxford out of um, League Two into League One. Um, got to a playoff final with them. Got to a playoff final with Lincoln reasonably recently. Obviously, didn't have a great stint at Blackpool. Uh, last season, his win, like, his win percentage stats over the course of his um, managerial career is about 37%. Um, and, and there were names linked that obviously had higher win percentages. Um, did, did, do you take that into account? How are you How are you sort of feeling about his arrival? Um, similar to Joe, really. Like, I think, um, you yeah, know, going off his statistics, you know, you think you could you can delve into those as, as much as you like, really. But sometimes it's, it's down to, you know, what we've spoken about with our sort of... Um, what we thought about Dean going, you, you can only work with the tools you're given. And I suppose at th- those clubs, you know, like Lincoln, as an example, he did a brilliant job Oxford as well, but their fans really do sing his praises very highly. And I've seen a lot of reaction to him joining us today from their supporters as, as being very positive and wishing him well, which obviously leaves like a nice, a nice feeling for us knowing that, that he's had um, successful stints previously at clubs at this level um, or, or below and getting them up to this level. Um, like Joe said, I, I don't really know what, what I expected, to be honest. Um, I'm glad that we've got somebody in and it gives us a, a, a full week to um to to get some, you know, his his way of playing into into some of the players, start toying with some of his ideas and how we might want to see us play. Um and look, I think you know there, there are worse there were worse names out there for sure. Um I think he's he's a good coach, which I think that's the imperative thing here, isn't it? Like seeing the the appointment is head coach. It's very, very clear that the strategy for the club is is that the recruitment side of things and that and is going to be dealt with by the likes of Andy Scott. And this is purely somebody who's going to come in and, and lead the coaching side of the of the team, which as much as I I don't agree with that setup in football clubs, is is where we are. So look, I'm not I'm not over the moon. I'm not ecstatic, but You've got the guys here now, so we, we don't have a choice but to give them a chance and get behind him. And you never know, do you? Sometimes the underdogs come in and they and do really well. Sometimes they don't. So let's let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see to see how it all pans out. Yeah, interesting point you make about obviously the arrival of Michael Appleton as head coach rather than manager, which we'll we'll, we'll really delve into the details of that after hearing from him. But um, as I've said to the other two, Sue, just really interested to get your what your initial reaction was when uh, Michael Appleton signed on the dotted line uh, earlier on this morning? Much like Joe and Lewis, really. Just, I think it was like, I'm not, I'm not sort of overly excited, but at the same time, I'm not disappointed. It's, it's a strange one, I think, because obviously we were, well, I personally was quite upset that we, we let Dean go so soon um especially when there was only that little bit left of the transfer window and then sort of seeing all the various rumors about who was going to go who had turned us down and then then you kind of start thinking well who in their right mind would want to come to us that's going to be worth anything and I mean yeah like you you read good and bad about all managers don't you and I guess really we can't, I mean, I've read negative stuff today and I'm kind of, well, you've got to give the guy a chance. He's only just walked in the door. Let's judge him on his results and and what happens next. But, yeah, I can get why people are not sort of jumping jumping up and down with excitement because it is it, it is a bit of a, a kind of left field one for me. Um, mm. But, yeah, we, I guess we've just got to give him a chance and see how it goes. Yeah, it feels very similar to the Nigel Atkins appointment in that when um, that job became available, when Bo left, and you know, I think we did an emergency podcast that night, and a lot of people sent in suggestions for who they wanted to be. You know, I don't think anyone said Nigel Atkins at the time. And when we did the emergency podcast following uh, the departure of Dean Holden, I don't remember anyone saying Michael Appleton when we asked for um, for suggestions as well. So you can see why it's, it's not perhaps the massive name that people were hoping for, um, you know, and I think considering where we are as a club and, you know, the, the massive disappointment this season has been, um, I think fair to say that the disappointing overall feeling to the transfer window for a lot of people, um, you know, it, everything's going to be really picked over with a fine tooth comb at the moment because we as Chomp fans want and need success. Um, the club needs that. And so, 
you know, fingers crossed that Michael turns out to be the man to do that. And there's no guarantees that if you'd hired Jose Mourinho or anyone like that, it would have been a different story. Um, and uh, let's just, I guess it is a case of we we'll wait and see, but a lot of fans are clearly not happy with the way the club's been run over the last few years. And I don't think that's changed yet. Uh, and I don't think Michael Appleton yet is the appointment that's changed that yet. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Let's hear from him, shall we? Uh, the Addicts uh, head coach, which I'm going to have to get used to saying, uh, spoke to the club media uh, earlier on this afternoon. Uh, and this is what he had to say. To Charlton, how does it feel to be at the club? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, I've got to say, um, you know, first day um, can be many things really um, chaotic, which it has been a little bit, you can imagine. feel like I've been pulled from pillar to post a little bit. Um, but no, it's exciting. It's, ex- it's, it's exciting for me as it probably is the players because the players get an opportunity to almost have a, you know, a clean slate, a fresh start. Um, and I think today sort of proved what I, I wanted to prove for myself, that the fire was well and truly still in the belly and you know, really looking forward to the, you know, the future. And you've been shown round the training ground this morning and you've taken your first session. How have you found it? It was good. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a fantastic facility. Um, it's very different to how I remember it last time I was here, if I'm being honest. It was just the, the old building, so, so that's been a, a real pleasant surprise. Um, and the lads have responded well today. You know, we've worked hard. Um, obviously, we've got the opportunity to have a full week next week without actually having the game tomorrow. Um, so they, they, they'll deserve their, their, their two days, their weekend, because um, you know, their physical output today was tough. And it was a thorough recruitment process. What impressed you about Charlton? Lots of things. I think the, the, the drive and the ambition, obviously, of the board um, was pretty clear and pretty evident straight away. Um, there's a, you know, like I say, the, through them and the owners, there's a clear, um, I suppose, and, and I'm careful using this word because a lot of people use it in terms of project. There is a clear, genuine project. You can tell that. Um, and I wanted to be a part of it and very, very quickly, um, you know, during the interview process, um, I bought into what they wanted to do and how they see the club going forward. And it was very, very clear from really early on that, you know, I was desperate to make sure that I was the one that impressed them to do that. What are you hoping to achieve in your time at the club? Uh, well, obviously, developing players has always been a big part of my, my career anyway. So whether, you know, me taking a role as a youth team coach or actually being sort of out there uh, as a first team manager, um, there's a big, big difference because ultimately you've got to be brave enough and have put players in situations that, uh, one, makes it difficult for them, but at the same time they feel comfort enough to, comfortable enough to produce what they're capable of doing. And um, so you know, developing the young talent that they've got here. The academy is an incredible academy. Um, help them to do that, have success. What does success look like? Well, clearly, you know, the club wants to be competing in the championship. So that's a, you know, a key thing for us to do. I want to be the person that, you know, allows them to do that and, and, and gets them to do that. Um, but I think first and foremost, I think that, you know, I'm, we've got some incredible supporters. I've had some tough times coming you know, to the Valley and uh, dealing with tough games um, over the years as, a, as an opposition manager. Um, and I want the fans to have something to really um, hang on to. And I think we've got enough ability in the group. And you touched on it briefly there, but what is your assessment of the current playing squad? Again, I think if anyone was w- watching us as a group, I think very, very clear they'd probably see how strong we are in possession and with the ball. And there's a lot of players who can deal with the ball, manipulate the ball, carry the ball up the pitch. Um, I think there's just a couple of tweaks that we certainly need to address early doors. You know, I want us and I need us to be much better set plays, you know, in both ends of the pitch, both boxes. Um, we need to be more aggressive. Um, certainly out of possession on, on the turnover, um, be a little bit more cuter, a little bit more organised. Um, and that almost gives us a little bit of a sort of starting starting block to to move and, and, and move things forward quickly. How do you want your Charlton team to play? Well, I've always I've always had a I like to think a, a brand of football that you know got people out of their seats and you know I want to be a possession based team without the amount of passes that some teams do when they call themselves a possession based team. You know I'm not 
looking to get seven, 800 passes a game. It's not my style, it's not our work. I want us to dominate the ball, but do it in the right way. Always looking to play forward, always looking to be brave and, and um, you know, getting in behind the opposition. Um, I think we've got a team that are athletic enough, athletic enough to do that. Um, they just need a little bit of guidance, which I hope to be able to give them. There we go. That's Michael Appleton speaking to the club uh, earlier on today after he signed that deal uh, as the new Addicts head coach. Joe, um, so like we say, th there were a lot of names out there. Um, what do you think it was that stood out for Michael Appleton over the Cowleys or the other names we've heard mentioned at this at this stage, like your John Brady's and your Dave Challoners and and uh, and, and whatnot? But what do you think the club have seen in him? <laughs> Uh, without putting the cat too much uh, too much amongst the pigeon, it, he was at Oxford for a while, um, so there would have been some knowledge of him from from certain members of the group. Um, so there's definitely that that element. But it, it, he has had a good reputation with young sides and and developing them, especially at Lincoln. That is is really where he started to make a name for himself. I think in in terms of some of his successes there, um, and. They're, they're, I imagine they're looking for someone that that is going to be sort of willing to just get on with the coaching and and not that fuss too much about what's happening above them. So if he's put himself saying, well, I, you know, I don't need too much control over over players. I I just want to get on the training ground. And I want to get this team working, and you know, I I'm going to bring this type of culture. And I think that'll be what has got him the job. And ultimately, I. Uh, having thought about it a little bit more over over the last couple of weeks, I'm I'm less inclined to be too worried about the actual name, um, and more inclined to are we bringing in the type of person who is going to stand his ground in terms of getting a philosophy on the pitch and fight his corner to get the right coaching staff and be able to get the maximum out of the players. And if he's come in and said, you know, th these are the types of areas where I'd want to change us and has really put his groundwork in, then that obviously would have stood out for the the club but Andy Scott was very clear in his interview earlier and, and quite scathing actually I, I felt um, about some of the things that have been going on at the club in terms of you know a winning mentality versus a you know a losing mentality and uh, how we're sort of willing to accept mediocrity and you know even that elite culture um, if he's coming in and hitting all those buzzwords then then you imagine Andy Scott's going to be buying into that and and this is You'd imagine now Andy Scott's man, the person he's going to be hanging his hat on, and hopefully he can come in and galvanise the team and, and get the maximum out of them. I think for too long we've not quite got enough out of the squads that we've had for various reasons, but especially because we're just so leaky at the back. Mm, yeah, well, it, it, which points we start with first? Lewis, um, the the point you made about the, the head coach role. Um, so I, from memory, I feel like it's not the first one we've had. I think we've done it a bit before, but obviously it's... It's considered the more modern way of thinking. I mean, you said you didn't, you, you weren't a big fan of it. Um, obviously, because of the way the club is now set up, a lot of it lands on Andy Scott. You know, he has to provide the squad. He has to build the squad in an image that suits what he wants the manager to be as well. Um, so it, it's sort of, in a way, it takes a bit of pressure off the manager, I guess. But it also takes a lot of control away from the manager when he is often the man who, who has to pay for, you know, poor recruitment or, or anything like that, even if, you know, sometimes it might be their own fault, of course, if they haven't been able to drill whatever side they've been given them. Why, why don't you like that that setup? I think for me, it's it's not so much about not liking the setup as a whole. It's not liking the setup here because I think all of our previous successes have come from having people in charge that aren't aren't just managers, but they're proper man managers that are involved with the full decision making they know what sort of character they'd like to recruit not just on footballing ability but what they bring mentally what they bring to the dressing room what they bring in terms of leadership qualities you look at the the rebuild under Chris Powell I saw a clip earlier this morning about how he went in and demanded what he needed to get that team together for that 2011-12 promotion winning season got backed and it was a case of him picking 16 whatever it was, 16 signings that were going to bring something, not just on the pitch, but off it as well. Likewise with Bo, you know, when they were left alone through the recruitment between Bo and Gallen, they got in the characters that they felt they needed to get the team promoted. And I, I think sometimes with the technical director, 
uh, with that decision not being solely in the manager's hands, that that can lead to, I, th I think that can lead to, to problems because there's no doubt, you know, Appleton's had experience in recruiting as well. He probably has players that he would like to bring in, but that will that prevent him bringing in the players that he would like because the technical director gets the final say? You know, things like that. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of, but we've got to give it a go. I, I think ultimately Appleton will be more of that. Obviously, he's going to be more of that coach side of things when where you've got Andy Scott making the decision on recruitment, which at the moment, I mean, that's we haven't got any choice in that because the window was was navigated by by Andy Scott and the recruitment team and and. Mike Appleton's obviously coming after the windows closed. So what what he's got now, he's got no choice to work with what he's got at the moment. Um, so he's going to adapt to that pretty quickly. But I, I don't know what sort of role he's had previously. Appleton, I haven't, I, did, I can't remember if in his previous spells he's been more of a head coach than a manager. But for me, I, I think if somebody's in charge of the team, they should be in charge of all of it from the recruitment up, not just what team plays on a Saturday. I think you structure your squad around personalities as, as well as footballing ability. And I think that's important that the manager gets the main say on that and not somebody that's not on the touchline and not taking the training day to day. Mm. Right. Harry's put in the chat. I know you like your stats, Louis. Appleton has a 37.8% uh, win ratio. I'm sure that's about the same as us uh, this season. We're all actually on the 33.3 recurring percent. Cause is it, or is that right? Yeah. Two out of six, I think. So, yeah. So well, it's an improvement already. So uh, here we go up the leagues we go. Um, the the point that Joe made about assistance, um, how how vital is it that he brings in his his own people? So I mean, at Blackpool, uh, David Kerslake and Richard O'Donnell, who I don't know a great deal about either of them, uh, joined him after having also worked with him at Lincoln as well. So uh, on paper, you assume it'd be those two that he'd want. Um, I don't I don't know their current employment status or anything like that, but um, yeah, we don't know because we haven't always had that. Obviously, Dean didn't get to bring his own people in. Um, and uh, that was uh, considered perhaps a, a downfall. Yeah, I, th I think your, your assistant is always, I think people underestimate the importance of a good assistant because they they effectively are the go-between. But I guess now Michael's not a manager, he's a coach. So how does that role change in that, I guess, when we've we've, Got, had the experience of having a manager of the football club that is very much the assistant that does the kind of a lot of the communication between the manager and the, the team and the actual coaching out on the training field but it's yeah I think we still don't know what what what's happening with Anthony I has, has anything been released about what yeah. Anthony's role is going to be going forward um, I think people were right in that uh, potentially that we didn't have the experience to assist Dean when when he was in charge. So having as as we've seen in the past, having an experienced assistant is normally quite successful when when a manager is is sort of fairly new to the role. But I, I guess it's different different with Michael because he is that little bit more experience. He has been a sort of a coach, head coach, manager at the other clubs he's been at so um and for for quite a period of time so i don't know it's it's it'll be interesting to see what happens with anthony but also like you say they i i think it is important for them to have someone they really trust um and can bounce those ideas off and have, have got the same sort of mentality about the game but it's also not frightened to challenge and maybe that's where things um, have fallen down a little bit in in the past. Not having such an experienced assistant or someone that would be willing to challenge the manager on decision making. Um, so yeah, I think I think the assistant is is in some ways equally as important as who who actually is going to who is the head coach or manager. Mm, interesting stuff. Um, Spamfish has put. Uh, some of the wording of the announcement is worrying how he understands his role, how happy he is with the quality of the squad. Uh, it just reads, in his opinion, that he has no say on transfers or sales. And I get, I mean, that's that's the role he's coming to do, Joe. He, he doesn't really, uh, you know, that 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 will be down to Andy Scott. You know, obviously, as we've mentioned a few times, that was quite a big, interesting change in um, sort of a way of describing transfer business from Dean Holden before he went. It was all on Andy, and that that was up to him to get it right. And has he got it right to the extent that? 
changing manager means that we've got enough in the building to progress you know it, it's an uphill task it's still it's not out of the question currently to recover and get into the playoffs if we put a run together just purely in terms of points but is it out of the question in terms of squad joe uh, <clears throat> i don't think we can fully judge because i don't think we've seen the most of the new or enough of the new players to really know exactly what what standard they are certainly the likes of kamara and eden look a cut above what we had in the building last season, which is is obviously a massive plus. And, and May, uh, you know, if you were comparing him to Macaulay Bond, uh, you know, you, you think we'd signed Messi, uh, but then I'm I'm a bit biased on that one. Um, so uh, it's it's going to be a challenge. I think that does hit on an interesting conversation point, though, because at what point do we start transitioning away from is Appleton good enough? And asking the question is Scott good enough? Because if he's running the football side of things at the top and appointing the head coach and in charge of all the transfers, ultimately he's the big decision maker um, and almost the de facto manager. So he'll be hoping very much that he has got the squad and he has got the man who can get the absolute best out of that, that squad. And if he has to fire Appleton as well before the end of the season, does that not just scream that, that Scott, isn't cut out for the role and the control and the power that he's got more than it does anything to do with Appleton and his abilities as a, as a coach or, or a manager. You just, you just hope that this is the right one. We've been going from pillar to post and fire to frying pan for so long as a club that what we want is a bit of stability, a bit of success and a, a bit of just focusing on what's happening on the pitch. And we had about three weeks of that this season. It'd be nice to get another three in before the end of it so that we could just see how how he's shaping up and you hope that he the players buy into him into what he's saying and you hope that he can galvanize that squad and and be a personality that we can associate with as well as having success on the pitch I think we've had lots of little elements of that but not the complete package and fingers crossed he can be that guy for us but it's a the verdict's out and for me I'll be judging more I think Scott on this appointment than I will Appleton himself. Mm, well, we will hear what Andy Scott has to say about the appointment uh, in the second half of the show. I mean, JM points out and, you know, it was sort of mentioned it didn't go great when he was at Blackpool uh, last season. He was sacked um, in January, uh, seven months after being appointed um, after just one win in, in the previous 11 games. Uh, they were 23rd in the championship relegation zone. Obviously, as we know, uh, they came down in our into our division. I mean, you're only as good as your last game, is is uh, what they say is uh, in football, Lewis. So, uh, are you only as good as your last managerial job? Um, I don't think so. I, th- I think you you obviously take experience from it, don't you? You know, Appleton's had some really good spells and some spells that haven't gone so well, and I think that's just natural in football. You see it all the time. You think Eddie Howe at the moment, he, he what did he do when he was at Bournemouth? He left, went to Burnley. Had a terrible spell there. Went back to Bournemouth, got him in the Premier League. Now he's managing Newcastle in the Champions League. You know, you can't... I think people always have bad spells. It's one of those things. Sometimes clubs just don't don't suit the manager that comes in. And ultimately, we we have to give him a chance, don't we? Because we haven't really got much, much else of a choice. And I think, ultimately, he comes across quite well. I think, as Joe said, he's got history with young players, which is, is good for us, given that we're so reliant on our academy um, and our younger players coming through um so hopefully he can he can sort of utilize that strength because that's probably the, the best thing about the football club at the moment by far so that experience will be good and could benefit some of those younger players you know we've seen the likes of Asim Way and um Karoy Anderson Kanu all playing this season someone like Michael Appleton may come in and, and give them you know tips and, and advice that maybe Dean Holden couldn't have um, so there are positives there for sure. Um, I won't judge him too much on his previous um, appointments because I always think the past is the past and he could come in here and do really, really well. So it's a clean slate for everybody ultimately, isn't it? When you when you change manager, that's the whole point of doing it. So it's a clean slate for us. So I won't judge him until until he actually is on that, on that touchline for us and, and managing this football club. I, I don't really care about what he's done elsewhere. Yeah, well, Michael says, I remember being impressed by how well his side's uh, played especially Lincoln all that matters uh, if he comes in and gets his winning uh, well he's clearly the messiah come again uh, Frank Franco said wholly underwhelming uh, but did we really expect anything different that said he will have my full support until such time 
as he stinks the place out. And that is sort of how it goes in it. You know, when the manager comes in, the fans will do their best to get behind him. And when it all goes wrong, obviously, and we, we, we know the drill now. We've been through it enough times. Uh, was he the 14th manager since Powley, which was 10 years ago? It's mad. Uh, Sam uh, said, not excited, not disappointed, just a bit meh. Uh, unfortunately, we are a meh club at the moment. Uh, get behind him, hope for the best, and then, then be sad when he gets sacked uh, at the end uh, of the season. Tony said um, on Twitter, or X, whatever it's called now, I'm hoping and think this might be a positive step. I didn't really want Dean to go, but we move on. Uh, Appleton has an understanding of getting out of these leagues, and we need a little bit more defensive solidity uh, which I think he will bring. I don't understand some people's ideas who we should get. We are not an attractive proposition right now in League One, and that's probably that's probably part of it. So you know, there were there were obviously there were there were crazy names being thrown about, but they were they were names that maybe for some League One clubs might have been realistic. I don't know, maybe a Darren Moore obviously disappointed to to not stay on in the Championship with Sheffield Wednesday. But he was in this division last year, getting promoted. That was one name that was bandied about. I mean, we have to. No, we don't have to accept that we are in an unattractive proposition because it, that, it's just reality that we're unattractive. We shouldn't accept it. We should, you know, I, I was on Radio London earlier and I said that being in um, League One this long for Charlton is is not acceptable or sustainable. Neither of those things are true. But, I mean, is Michael Appleton like the the peak of where we could have gone for now? Do you think it, could we have pushed the boat out and got someone slightly more sexy? And I'm obviously not talking about his arms there because they are absolute beasts. Joe's putting his hand up. You are ruled out, my friend. <laughs> Sorry, Joe's arms put me off then. Um, <laughs> it, uh, again, I think we've got no divine right to say we're not that Premier League club anymore. And I think a lot of fans, and, and I don't mean this disrespectfully by any means, but a, a lot of our younger fans who started coming when we were in the Premier League, seem to have a higher expectation of where we should be at. Yeah, we all want to be as high as we possibly can be, Premier League ideally, but we're not. Um, and I think, obviously, we don't know what the financial situation is with, with the consortium. We don't know how much we could um, give we, a new seen manager. All, yeah, we, we've, I don't know. We, have, we haven't seen a great deal. Have we seen some? Some spend, and we will have one of the higher budgets in the division. Yeah, we haven't seen anything like Ipswich levels from last season. But I guess when you're when you're recruiting a manager and you've just whatever you've spent out in a transfer window, and that you're trying to balance up um, in terms of FFP or however that's working now with this consortium, I think it's he probably is the best that we were going to get. In, in in the circumstances, not just about money or recruitment, but just in terms of how unstable we've been as a club for the last four or five years. I think a lot of managers, as we know, it was publicised that, that Pally had kind of declined to come back, even in an interim way. And I think you you've got to look at, how the clubs run as a whole and and as a manager and as a professional you have to look at is that something that I want to be dealing with or do I just want to be able to go into a club and get on with my job now it sounds like what Michael's saying is that that side of stuff is being dealt with by Andy and he'll just be on the pitch doing the coaching and and the date like the match day stuff so it's in that respect then that I guess we'll see um, but yeah, I think when with the names being banded about, I think he was probably the best that we were going to get. Um, and I don't mean that disrespectfully to him, but like we say, we're not a Premier League club anymore. We've not mm. got multiple millions of pounds to spend out on players. So, mm. right, Michael's uh, agreeing. Michael Davis, that Joe's uh, spot on uh, the relationship between Andy Scott. Uh, and Michael Appleton will be keen. We've got a Lincoln fan in the chat. Good evening to Fred. Uh, says Appleton only wants technical players. If you can't trap a bag of cement, uh, then pack your bags. McGrandles will play for certain. Uh, Eden will be a starter. He obviously, he's worked with those uh, those two players. I think. Um, um, yeah, uh, a few people are asking, will this mean that McGrandles gets to look in? He's that injured though for a while. So uh, going by the rate we hire and fire, he might. Uh, Michael might not still be here by the time that <laughs> McGrandles is fit, but uh, we'll see. Right, we're going to hear from Andy Scott after the break. Uh, we've got so many more of your messages 
uh, to come to as well. But let's have a very quick break here uh, on Charlton Live. Thinking about a new kitchen or bathroom? Find professional, independent local installers with free home surveys, itemised quotes and protected payments, trading standards approved contracts and workmanship warranties. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom, Bathroom Installations accredits installers to ensure they are police checked, fully insured and experienced. Take the risk out of home improvement. Visit bikbbi.org.uk Hello fellow addicts. I'm so excited to tell you all about our micropub, The River Owl House. The River Owl House is based in East Greenwich. It has six Pub of the Year awards, an ever-changing selection of amazing beer. It's owned by Charlton fans, walkable to the ground in just 20 minutes with buses that go direct to the Valley too. If your match day routine includes a drink with your friends, you must join your fellow addicts in the river. See you soon. Right, welcome back to Charlton Live. We are discussing the arrival of Michael Appleton as the new addicts at head coach uh, we heard from him before the break we're going to hear from Andy Scott shortly as well I just want to bring to your attention though uh the uh, Jack Jeffrey Superhero Trust are having a uh, charity football match at Bromley FC on uh, Sunday the 1st of uh, October um yeah if you can get down there to support obviously what is a, a very good charity very close to the hearts of many uh, Charlton fans feel free there's plenty of uh, famous faces going to be down there James Arthur uh, Jamie O'Hara, Dean Gaffney is a big one for me personally, um, but there, there's some good names on that list. Uh, so if you can get down to Hayes Lane on Sunday, the first of October, uh, to support a really good, uh, a really good superhero trust there, remembering Jack Jeffries, please uh, do so. Twelve pounds plus ticket uh, plus booking fee uh, for the tickets down at Hayes Lane, where I will be tomorrow, because of course the Addicts aren't playing uh, this weekend. We've got an international break, which is very useful, I think, actually for um, for the new boss Joe, because he, well. Uh, we were hoping that this morning was his first day on the training ground. It would have been nice if he could get a couple more, you know, <laughs> before being greedy. But that's a full week now to, you know, go and assess the uh, what's well, you know the damage basically. You just walk around with your your head in your hands, thinking, "Oh God, who's been drilling this back for?" Um, and and uh, work out what needs to be done to go and win the game at Stevenage in uh, you know a week tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I I thought it was madness of Wigan to call a game off. And then someone pointed out we actually managed to get three internationals, which took me by complete surprise. Not once did I think it was us that had been able to call it off. Uh, so, look, we got a week. He's got a week on our training ground. We we referenced it recently. I think it might have been yourself, Louis, that interestingly, we seem to get much worse during international breaks over the last two seasons. So hopefully he can break that curse. But he's got he's got a week now to really focus on getting his messages across without any other distractions and, it, and can, can try and build some understanding and some, some of the philosophies. I, it, I don't know if anyone else has had the chance yet to listen to some of his stuff on Coach's Voice and the, the bits he's talking about there in terms of numbering and naming certain sections of the pitch and being able to get that drilled into players so he can get his messages on clearer. If they if they can just get their head around that template and, and the structures that they're going to have on and off the ball to, to start with and that's obviously a great start and then you can move things along but we know that he's got this week now and then maybe another one and we'll be back to Saturday Tuesday Saturday Tuesday very very quickly so it's a great opportunity but it's absolutely critical that he makes the most of this time because he's not going to get many of these weeks this season and he's going to have to make sure that the ones he gets he, he really uh, you know hits them with absolutely everything he's got but it'll be it'll be nice the players you imagine will be picked up and looking forward to a, a new horizon, even if they have been a bit dismayed, you know, or a bit upset by by losing Dean this early in the season. But it's a good opportunity for him. It, it does put a bit of pressure on him as well, because he can't say, well, I only had a day's training. He's got just over a week to really get his message in there and, and get that team set up. No, I expect us to be playing like Brazil 1970 after a week. Jacko knocked the team that, beat, that were beaten at home by Accrington Stanley, one of the worst displays you've ever seen. Uh, they, he knocked them into shape to go and win at Sunderland, who'd won all six home games previous to that in the space of one afternoon. So they, no, no, no pressure there, uh, Michael Appleton. Paul uh, on Twitter said he's uh, uh, not particularly in inspiring, uh, but an also predictable appointment. He hopes he does the bizzo. Uh, though, uh, Minty says people need to get behind him, whatever their views. He might surprise us uh, and do well. Ian says he looks like a bouncer at Zen's on a Saturday night. Um, you know, uh, obviously steering clear of Zen's. If uh, well, I've been to a nightclub for a very long time. John says uh, he looks very much like an Adkins type of appointment to me. Uh, he has had some success, but a long time ago, recent job has not gone well, especially Blackpool 
uh, interest in the club felt he need uh, they need the need to talk up his record. But I mean, every club's going to do that when they um, when they sign a manager. I mean, Anthony is saying it's time that the players uh, need to get their uh, socks pulled up uh, and accept being responsible for holding and losing his job together. Uh, Kirk. Uh, uh, the bad Appleton in the squad needs to say <laughs> that's from Anthony. Um, I did ask Alfie, you know, how much the, the squad feels culpable uh, when I spoke to him after the win, win against Fleetwood over the weekend, which is obviously on the last pod. You know, it's, there must be a, a part of that, um, at least. Well, we still got loads of your messages to come to. Um, I think we should hear from the technical uh, director now, Andy Scott, obviously, the man. Uh, who was tasked with uh, finding a new manager or a new head coach in this case for the Addicts. This is what Andy said on the arrival of Michael Appleton. Any period for you since your appointment in July? Let's start with today and the appointment of Michael Appleton as our new head coach. What will he bring to Charlton? Well, he's a very good coach. Um, every, every person we spoke to that had worked with him um, or worked for him um, and he'd worked for <clears throat> was very complimentary about his work on the grass. Um, we knew the type of coach that we wanted to bring in. Um, obviously, the, the transfer window shut, so they've, they're gonna, they've got a group of players they're going to have to work with. So it was important that you know we had a clear idea of the type of person that we wanted to fit with the squad that we've got. Uh, and Michael, you know, ticked all those boxes. And Michael's come in as head coach rather than manager. How do the two roles differ? Well, a manager is probably a little bit of a, a you know sort of old school way of looking at it where they, the manager sort of generally you know is in charge of recruitment of charge of the whole of the staff and recruiting everybody as well as the coaching and the managing their staff and um, I think that you know modern way of, of being a head coach is that you look after the group that you've got and your your immediate staff and they're allowed to do your work on on the grass and my job is to take a, your responsibility for all the other stuff that would get in his way and stop him, you know, being able to progress our players and develop them. So, um, you know, he he wants to be on the grass. He wants to coach. He's a very good coach. He's, you know, he finished his playing career very early, but had a, an idea that he wanted to coach and has had a, a very strong coaching career since then. So, you know, it fitted well with the model of what we want for the football club. And he's very, he was very happy to fit into that. And it's been a thorough recruitment process. A number of names have been linked. Can you just talk us through what went into that process to find our new head coach? Well, obviously, there's, there's a number of people that applied for it and wanted it. There's lots of agents who are suggesting names, some that don't re represent those managers or coaches and some that do. Um, you know, the first thing that we did, we made a very clear matrix of the type of manager that we wanted, what they needed to do, how they needed to work, how they needed to communicate. Um, what they could do on the grass and what, how they could work with our, with our players. And once we did that, we whittled down a very, very, very long list of, of coaches down to you know, a long list. Did a lot of research on, on the people that had applied and the ones that we wanted to go and speak to. Um, we spoke to a number of coaches um, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, it was a really good, really good process. I think that when you speak to so many people, when you do find the right one, you recognise that quickly because you know, they, they stand above the others that also impressed you in certain areas. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a long process. It's only a couple of weeks, but it feels like a long process because we, we spoke to so many people. We met Michael uh, and a number of other coaches um, several times. Um, it's important you don't just take the first impression. And we, we had some stringent questioning after the first round of interviews to make sure that we were sure about who we were employing and why. And there, you know, understanding their their personality and how they would fit in and how they would coach. And uh, when it came down to the, to the final decision, you know, Michael was the overwhelming uh, you know, decision for, for us as a, as a board. What are you hoping Michael can achieve here at Charlton? We want to get promoted. Uh, you know, I spoke to the players on Thursday, you know, knowing that a decision was going to be made on, on the coach and Michael was going to be coming in and, and you know, didn't name Michael's name, but said that this can't happen anymore. Today's the last day that we are a losing club. We've lost six games out of eight in anyone's book. That's not acceptable. It's not acceptable for this football club. Shouldn't be acceptable for any football club. But if we are going to achieve anything, the losing habit has got to stop. and We've got to start having a mentality that means that we can win. Michael will bring that and we need to make sure that the players understand that so that every day in training when they're on the grass, they will be expected to you know, perform to their to their best and show that winning mentality and show the application that, that we all want to be successful. This club stood still for too long. It stood for, it's not good enough. 
you know, we've been here six weeks, obviously, with Dean leaving, it's put a bit of a span in the works in terms of the time scale of how we wanted to move things along. But my job now is to put put my mark on this on this football club and, and, and us as an ownership group is to start improving all areas to bring it to the level that it should be. And, you know, in, it, actually the last six weeks have probably allowed us to see a lot of things that we were probably pretty sure that we wanted to change, but now we're definite that we want to change things and improve things. And there's areas of the club that, that have been neglected for a while, and that's fine, that's understandable. We, we know what we're walking into, but now we've got to take action and, and, and actually bring this club to the level that we can be that gives Michael the best chance of being successful. There we go. That's Andy Scott speaking earlier on today to the club. Um, there's, there's a bit more of that interview and also the one with Michael Appleton on the Charlton website. So if you want to have a look at that, the club uh, kindly sent us over the whole video, but they are quite long, so I didn't want to use them all. So do check those out, Lewis. Um, yeah, the big decision for Andy to make. Um, you know, fans have seen the transfer windows and they will have judged him on that transfer window, whether they think there's anywhere near enough there. You know, it's certainly up for debate. Um, but... Yeah, this is part of it as well. This is part of his role is to bring, you know, stop that losing culture, which we, um, unfortunately, we're a bunch of losers at the moment and uh, that needs to change. It does. And, you know, I haven't really heard a huge amount from Andy Scott recently, but listening to that, I, I liked that he said about us, you know, we've been a losing side for too long um, and that needs to change. You know, as you said earlier on in the show, it was quite a scathing interview, which, you know, shows the frustration like you know it translates down not just from the fans but also to the to the people at the club obviously you're naturally going to be very frustrated with the way we've started this season um it's put us behind and and let's catch up and and ultimately you're you're forever playing catch up now for the rest of the season and you got to hope that we get some positive results pretty quickly to try and sort of salvage something because i think the further behind we fall then you know the more the crowds will dwindle and things like that and it just becomes one big negative movement where if we go and win the next three or four on the spin or something, um, you might see crowds start filtering back in. The support ramps up. There's a bit more of a feel-good factor around the place. We've obviously had the new signings come in. We've only seen like a, a, a short, a small amount of those on on Tuesday night at Crawley, which we won't talk too much about anyway. Um, but you know, there's there's players to come in that we've that we've signed on deadline day that that could come in and make a difference, and hopefully it ramps up a little bit. Um, in terms of competition for places and players butt their ideas up a little bit. But ultimately, as I said earlier on, we've got to judge Michael Appleton on on what he is as charter manager, not previously. And and hopefully, you know, coming in with with the players that we've got and the players that we've signed, he can he can galvanise the team and, and push us a bit further up the league and, and salvage the season. Otherwise it's rinse and repeat again, isn't it? Mm, yeah, right. Phil said on Twitter Appleton, an underwhelming appointment just like everything else. Uh, that SC7 partners have so far delivered. Why pay uh, £10 million uh, for the club uh, that owns nothing and then do everything on the cheap? What's their game? However, I will back the manager for now. I do think we could be looking at the next full guy uh, fairly soon. I live life to the full. And Andy Scott says, it's amazing how these people always talk a good game. And, you know, I think that's, um, you know, that's sort of uh, been accepted uh, when, when the ownership came in, that the talking's done and that it's got to be the action now. And obviously we're, we're excited to see when the action is going to, going to start and uh, how that works out for us. Um, Cause obviously it hasn't yet. Um, yeah. More, more talk about Kirk from Glenn saying uh, Kirk can't be bothered. Chucks is always broken to defense has more holes in it uh, than a sieve. It's a mega job for anyone who comes in. I just can't see uh, where it's going to change um couple more points before we go we are going to shoot off in, in a few moments time because there's uh, uh a few things uh, that you all need to be doing on a friday night but i certainly need to go and put my daughter to bed so uh, luke says uh, they want to coach to coach our young players and uh, players and develop them for selling them on uh, that's what i'm getting from it to be honest uh james said uh, if ever we manage to get our first choice front six yes i know and playing regularly we could be a force but the weakness is our defense two subpar keepers in my opinion and a bunch of average center half so yeah plenty of work to do as we saw in the uh the checker trade whatever it's called in the midweek against Crawley like we're all right going forward we just can't defend no matter who's playing no matter who we stick out there we, we can't keep it tight uh, at the back right this has been a special episode uh, of Charlton Live on your Friday evening thank you for everyone who's joined us live uh, on the show uh, this evening a massive thank you uh, to everyone who's listened on the podcast afterwards as well don't forget to subscribe uh, either way you get your podcast or we're on our YouTube channel or indeed on both because uh, 
might as well do it on both, either. Um, right, Joe, Sue, and Lewis, thank you very much for joining us this evening. No worries. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. I'm Louis Mendes. This has been Charlton Liar, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom uh, Installation. We'll be back on Thursday when we'll look ahead to Michael Appleton's first game in charge, which is away to Stevenage. We shall see you then. <laughs>